Hello and welcome again to Red Gamer Tech, my name is Amata. Today is the 22nd of January and this time I'm bringing you some comments from Phil Spencer regarding the Xbox One and their Windows 10 cross-platform plans. Now yesterday was a very interesting day with lots of exciting reveals. One of them being that if you have Windows 10 you can stream Xbox One to your PC. Now you don't even be able to play some games, say Fable Legends, across both platforms and as I said previously in my other video, and do watch that if you want full info, to stream games from your Xbox One to a Windows 10 PC or tablet. Now, what's really interesting is that some of their other plans were going to be cross-buy as well as cross-platform, meaning that you can buy a game on one platform and access it on multiple. However, this does sound like it's still in flux, and some of the decisions aren't really down to Microsoft, judging from the comments from Phil Spencer. Now, he went on by saying, quote, We're the platform. We will enable what publishers want to do with their content. I'm not giving anybody's content away to somebody else. That's not our role. But how you end up with the game on both platforms is going to be dependent on who's selling the game. We're going to let the publishers decide the business model that they have on their titles. So basically, it's Microsoft's answer to the remote play that they, Sony have had between PS3, 4 and Vita, where you can have cross-platform play, and of course they've even had cross-platform play between PS4 and PC, or at least planning on it, for Street Fighter V. Now, Phil went on to say that apparently Microsoft is still kind of figuring out what they plan to do for their first-party games, such as Fable Legends, as well as future games that will span both Windows and Xbox platforms. Now, he said, quote, We're going to have to work through the scenarios and the games. I think it's going to be a little game by game. And basically went on to say that some games do benefit um, economically and gameplay-wise from having a much larger install base, which is very much the case. He then went on to clarify that unlike games for Windows Live, in Windows 10, developers will actually get their full access to Xbox Live and everything else that an Xbox One developer would have at their disposal. And... He continued to say, quote, You're going to see a lot more commonality in the gameplay and the experiences that people put together. We did Shadowrun and enable crossplay on PC and Xbox 360, and I think it was okay. I don't think it changed gaming when it came out, but it was a good investigation of control input and fidelity. I think you're going to see some that same creative focus as this evolves to figure out which games are great for cross-platform play and which aren't. Resolutions between PC and console will be different in certain cases. Controllers versus keyboard and mouse is something sometimes an issue that people get hung up on. My job on the platform side is to provide the tools and let developers figure it out. Now obviously Microsoft isn't go going to go around demanding that developers support cross-platform play. Basically they're giving the developers the tools and it's their choice of whether or not they want to use them, which is fair enough. That's pretty much exactly what they should be doing. If a developer wants to have cross-platform play, awesome. If not, that's their choice. Now, he went on to say, and speak a little bit on how scenarios in which cross-platform play between Xbox and PC could work. And he said, quote, You can imagine playlists that people are cool with just playing with their friends, like Gears of War's Horde mode. If you're on keyboard and mouse and I was on controller playing PvE, you wouldn't care. Or in PvP where there's players that's controller only, keyboard and mouse only, and cross-play, let people decide where they want to go to play. In the end, some people are hardcore about the competition and some people just want to have fun playing together, and I want to enable both. The other thing I'm interested in that scenario is cross-platform chat. We have a lot of people that get into parties and just start chatting even though they're playing different games at the same time. Now, they also said at the conference that the new app for Windows 10, the Xbox app, will actually allow players to chat via voice and text across both Windows and Xbox platforms. So obviously, that very nicely ties in to the cross-platform play. Now, there is a video which details all of this, and it's led some people to speculate whether or not people are going to be asked to pay on PC to basically, well, have Xbox Live. And, well, that's not really going to fly with PC gamers, I don't think. So, hopefully, Microsoft doesn't go down that road, but, of course, they haven't really said it's all speculation at the stage. It will be linked in the description below this video. So, I'd suggest give that video a look-see. Tell me what you think. I think that sounds pretty damn awesome. Of course, with certain games... 
having keyboard and mouse versus controller is not going to be fair. Say, for example, the most pertinent example being first-person shooters simply is more accurate to play on a keyboard and mouse than it is a controller. However, if you're just playing a casual game, it might not matter to you so much, but if you're very much into your competition, having a fair fight and whatnot, then of course you'd have the controller-only playlist, etc. Or what have you. So there's definitely going to have to be certain systems in place so that everyone can play nicely together, as I definitely think the different control methods are going to be a slight issue, but not a huge one. I just think the scenario that Phil detailed about having different playlists of a different scenario, say controller only, keyboard and mouse only, or mixed, or whatever, that's fine. So you can choose depending on your preference. If you're not all that bothered about some PC guy being slightly more accurate than you, or whatever, then you can just play with someone who's probably using keyboard and mouse, and it won't matter as much if it's a third person game. Of course, it still gives you more accuracy with the mouse, but it doesn't have a huge impact like it does in an FPS. Of course, it's very much going to be on a game by game basis, and of course, certain games, say a side scroller or something like that, something like Castle Crashers, just for example, playing on keyboard and mouse is not going to give you any advantage at all. So it really depends on the title and, of course, the people's preference. So it seems like they're going about this exactly the right way. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.